everyone and welcome back to our channel. I am Anne and together with my good friend and business partner Wayne, we run the Sussex Handmade Soap Company. And in today's video, we are going to be showing you how we make soap dough sprinkles. Some of you may have seen our video on Tuesday in which we made our actual soap dough. Today we are taking things one step further and we are colouring that soap dough and turning it into little sprinkle decorations. If you didn't see our video on Tuesday making the soap dough and you would like to, I will try and link it in one of the top corners now so you can have a look at that. Um, soap dough sprinkles are a really fun, eye-catching way to decorate the top of your soaps. Just a word of warning though, if you are in the EU or the UK and you are planning on selling your soaps, you cannot use the sprinkles to create decorations or designs that resemble food because in the UK and the EU it is against the law to actually sell soaps or cosmetics that do resemble food. So you just have to get kind of a little bit creative with your designs. There are plenty of ways you can use these sprinkles to create designs that don't resemble food. Yeah, you just have to get a little bit creative with what you are doing. Soap dough sprinkles are actually really easy to make, but there is one tool that you will need to enable you to make them, and that is an extruder. We will be showing you our own extruder and talking a little bit about that in today's video. So without any further waffle or chit chat, let's jump straight in to making the soap dough sprinkles. So here is our plain uncoloured soap dough. And the reason that I always make ours just plain white, because I could actually colour the soap before I turn it into soap dough. That would also be a perfectly easy, fine way of doing this. But I like to do ours white because then I can colour it as I need it to whatever colour I happen to be wanting to use that day. And I'm not kind of being held to whatever colour soap dough I have made and in my cupboard. So I like to go with white because I just find it easier to colour it after it's been made and to be able to do it whatever colour my recipe requires. So what I do, I take my white soap dough and then I break off however much I'm going to need. So today we're going to do three different colours and we don't need huge amounts so I'm just going to do, I suppose this is probably a slightly larger golf ball sort of size. Yeah, just slightly larger than your average kind of golf ball. So I'm going to do three pieces the same size, or roughly the same size. Rolling them into very rudimentary kind of uh, ball shapes. Ready for colouring. And to colour I use mica powders. And today we are going with Emerald Lagoon for a nice green shade from Resonate. We are going with Fiery Fusion for a pinkish reddish shade. And we are going with Tropical Temptations for a nice bright blue. And obviously once they are in the soap dough these colours can change slightly. They are not necessarily going to stay as red and as blue and as vibrant. They will probably change a little. But those are the kind of colours we are going for today. So we're going to work them one at a time, we shall start with the green, so I'm going to pop these to one side, I'm going to pull out my green, and the first thing I personally like to do is after I've made that beautiful golf ball, I squash it. <laughs> I flatten it down just into, I suppose, oh, I don't know, half a centimetre thick, roughly, very roughly, you don't have to be exact at all. And I pop it just down on the board. Then I take a quarter of a teaspoon measuring spoon and I'm going to add the mica now and you do not need a lot. This is, as I say, is a quarter teaspoon and I am using about half, so about an eighth of a teaspoon of mica and I am just sprinkling it over the surface area of the soap dough. And then all I'm doing is just kind of folding it into the middle. I so say this is how I like to do it. As long as you're incorporating it, you can do it anyway. But I like to incorporate it into the middle because then I feel that it doesn't kind of puff out as easily. And you're just going to work it and knead it with your fingers into the soap dough. And this will take a little while to start altering the colour. It's not quick and easy, it's not instant, and at first you may look at it and think, 
it's not working at all. But just keep going, keep molding it, keep playing with it, keep just kneading it. I think the key thing here is to just take time and have patience and just keep molding and eventually the mica powder will become more evenly dispersed and it will colour the entire piece of soap dough. If you wanted to, you could roll it on the board as well, just to try and incorporate it. Just working it into itself. But I prefer, personally, just squeezing it around in my hands. It's like one of those little stress toys. So there we go. I have probably spent five minutes or so working this colour in now, and we have got I would say a pale sort of mint green colour there and I'm happy with that colour, I think it looks pretty, it looks greener in real life than it does on the camera screen at the moment but um, I can assure you it is a pale sort of mint green colour, so happy with that. We're going to pop it to one side now and we're going to colour those other two portions of dough. So as before we are going to add approximately just a half of a quarter teaspoon, so an eighth of a teaspoon, which we're going to shake over one portion. Then we're going to repeat with this sort of pinkish red one. I kind of sprinkle it over as much surface area as possible, just because I think it kind of helps it to be incorporated a little bit easier. And then to make things quicker and easier, I am calling for my extra spare pair of hands. Da -da -da -da! <laughs> and we're going to do the same as we did with the green. We are going to roll these up, fold them in, and we are going to work these mica powders into our pieces of soap. I'm just going to stop and say I've got a really nice marbled effect there so if marbling was something you were going for you could kind of stop when it's only half dispersed and go for a marbly kind of colour but we don't want that so I'm going to carry on. So here are three coloured portions of soap dough and we are now going to use these to make soap dough sprinkles today. Basically a soapy version of those little sugar decorations that you often find on top of cupcakes and things like that. And it's pretty easy to do. There is one thing you will most definitely need, and that is an extruder tool. Um, we're going to get the lid off this and I shall show you exactly what it is. So this is actually a clay extruder set. It is generally used with things like modelling clay, FIMO, FIMO, however it's pronounced. I've never been sure about that. Um, and it is used to just create little pieces of I say normally clay but in our case soap dough that have been squeezed through the tool and actually just have you know you've got long shapes that can then be inserted into soaps or chopped up and put on the top of soaps uh, things like that this is a 26 millimeter extruder uh, Fimo, Fimo, I'm just going to say Fimo because it comes out of my mouth easier uh, they do an 18 millimeter one as well we use the 26 millimeter one because it is slightly bigger and we like having bigger shapes to go through our soap so let's show you what is inside so you have the basic extruder tool here, this is the handle, this is the actual tool and what you would do is you take off the end and you unwind the handle and then you would place your soap dough in here. This bit here you need an extruder disc to go in here, these here are the extruder discs. They come in all different shapes as you can see. Today for the sprinkles we are going to be working with this one just here. It has just got very simple circular holes so this is the disc that we need to create our soap sprinkles with. So we take the disc, we place it into the extruder ring there and then we need to fill this part up with soap dough. And to prepare our soap dough for being extruded, we need to roll it into kind of a cylinder sort of shape, something that is gonna fit 
inside the cavity of that extruder. And you can see as I'm rolling that my soap dough is roll rolling nicely. It is not sticky, I'm not getting residue on my hands. If I was getting residue on my hands, then it wouldn't extrude well. You want it to be smooth, soft, not sticky, not tacky. If you have just finished adding your colour, you may find that it is temporarily a little sticky um, and it is harder to roll. If it is, just pop it to one side for a few minutes and it will firm up again and it should then be absolutely fine to roll. There we go, you pop it easily into the extruder, trim off any excess and then you want to attach the end piece with the extruder disc inside. It just screws on nicely and easily. Then we're going to attach the handle of the extruder And then basically you are twisting, you know, in a clockwise direction and you will see that the dough starts to come out. And I tend to extrude just a little and then it is difficult with this one because there are a lot of strands. <laughs> but I try and make sure they are coming out as straight as possible, which I say with something like this where there is a lot of strands isn't the easiest thing. And as you will see, they come out kind of like spaghetti. I'm going to place the ones that I have extruded to one side to dry a little. We don't want to do anything with them until they have started to firm up just a bit. And there's still plenty more dough in here, so we're just going to continue extruding more. And we are just going to let these firm up a little bit before we chop them down into our sprinkles. So we are going to repeat the process now with our red and our green, or even our red and our green. <laughs> So now we have extruded all of our soap dough sprinkles that currently look like very strange spaghetti. We are going to allow them to dry for a little bit and then we are going to chop them up. We don't want to try and chop them now because they just won't work. They will squish back into each other, they won't separate into individual sprinkles and it will all go wrong. So we're going to leave these until they have dried a little, firmed up a little, then we're going to come back and chop them down into little sprinkles. And we have actually chosen to dry our soap dough sprinkles today just over a broom handle, if I'm being honest, uh, just to separate the strands so that they don't get stuck to each other. You don't have to do this, but we find it just helps separate the strands so they are easier to chop up when they're dry and they don't end up getting stuck to each other. So these were left for about half an hour, so they really don't need long at all, just to firm up a small amount so they are able to be cut nicely without kind of squishing into each other. And we are just going to use a palette knife now and all we're doing to create the sprinkles is literally just chopping with a palette knife and working our way down the strands. And we are cutting them all about, well, between half a centimetre and a centimetre in length. You can obviously do them thinner, sorry, shorter or longer if you wish to. And yeah, we're just going to lightly apply the pressure, chop them, push them to one side. So we have now painstakingly chopped all of our strands of spaghetti down into sprinkle strands. Um, and we could leave them there if we wanted to, but we are going to do one more thing to them. We have got these little plastic bags here. We don't buy these. These are just what we save from supplies that we get shipped. Uh, quite a lot of stuff comes in these plastic bags and we like to save them to reuse them. 
and we are going to tip the colours one at a time into a plastic bag just like so I'm going to repeat with the green and the blue ones now if you don't have a plastic bag you could probably do this step in uh, a little pot or you know just something preferably that you can seal so maybe like a Tupperware container something like that just tip the strands yeah into a container that preferably can be sealed And then the last thing we are going to do for the green ones, we are taking the same green mica that we used earlier and we are using again about an eighth of a teaspoon of mica and we're going to sprinkle this over the top of our sprinkles. We are then going to seal the bag up and then leaving air in the bag so they've got space to move around, we are going to shake this to coat those sprinkles with that mica powder. You don't have to be too gentle, too careful. You can use, you know, quite a, quite a uh, forceful back and forth a shake when you're doing this step. And there are two reasons for doing this. The first is it will give a really nice shimmer to the finished sprinkles. And the second is that the mica powder actually acts as a um, non-stick kind of uh, substance so uh, <laughs> I hope I'm explaining that okay it means that the sprinkles are less likely to be sticking to each other or get stuck to each other because that mica is going to provide yeah, a non-stick coating so they aren't going to kind of clump together so it looks pretty and it's also functional in helping these sprinkles to stay a little bit separate from each other so I'm going to make you wait to see the reveal of what they look like and we're going to move on to the red ones and it is exactly the same process. We are going to take about an eighth of a teaspoon of the same red mica powder, well, red pink mica powder that we used earlier. We're gonna seal our bag shut. And with plenty of air in the bag, we are going to shake. And onto the blue. For the blue, I've actually chosen to use a different colour mica for the shimmer. This is called Kingfisher. It is slightly lighter, but I think it gives a really pretty colour when it is combined with the darker blue from underneath. So, seal the bag and shake. So here we go. They have all been coated in mica. We have decanted them into little pots and you can see what a difference just that little mica shimmer makes. And we are really happy with how these have turned out. Here we have got the red pinky coloured ones and then we have got these gorgeous green ones and then lastly we have got these kind of sky blue ones so here are our finished soap dough sprinkles and I think they look really pretty they're all nicely individual they are not stuck to each other um, they're really vibrant, pretty colours and I think if you are making a soap where you just want something to kind of give a wow factor on the top of the soap that, you know, soap sprinkles are relatively easy to knock up if you've got the right tools, they don't take too long uh, they're a little fiddly but not really once you get the hang of what you're doing, does that make sense? Um, and they are fun and you can create some really cool colours and designs so here we have it Soap dough sprinkles. So I hope you found today's video a little bit interesting, a little bit informative. Uh, as you all have noticed, we didn't actually do a limited edition soap today. We normally, or at least for the last few weeks, months, you know, since January, we have been doing limited edition soap designs on a Friday. Um, and we have been doing four per month. We've actually found that we have got so much else going on at the moment with new products and fairs starting to open up again that it's actually getting a little bit hectic to be doing four limited editions per month so we are probably going to drop that down to perhaps two perhaps in really busy months there won't even be any uh, and perhaps on quieter months there will be sort of three or four but yeah for the time being we're probably going to drop the limited edition designs down to two a month and on the other Fridays we'll just be showing you something else whatever we fancy, whatever we kind of, you know, 
got the tools and ability to create at that precise moment in time. Um, but anyway, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Next week, perhaps on Tuesday, perhaps on Friday, not quite sure yet, we will be revisiting soap dough and showing you how we make some flowers and things like that and also how we create long embeds that go through the centre of soap to actually create a design in the centre of soap and again that will also be using the extruder tool. If you do enjoy our videos please do hit that subscribe button, leave us a comment, give us a like um, and feel free to visit our website if you want to and if you wish to purchase anything, you can also use our discount code for 20% off. We've also got Instagram and Facebook, which are linked in our description. So if you want to follow us there as well and see what else we get up to, um, please do. We shall see you next week on Tuesday and have a lovely weekend. Bye.